Hello. We're going to see my friend Matt Hoffman right now. And uh, if you don't know who he is, Matt is, he's like the evil Knievel of our time, not like is. And uh, me, Jeff, and Spike just did a documentary on him. Of it. Tremaine was actually the director, me and Spike, mere producers. Anyway, the documentary is called The Birth of Big Air, and we made the movie because Matt is awesome. If you know anything about BMX, you know who Matt Hoffman is. And maybe that's all you know. It always gets to the point like, where it feels like everything's been done and then somebody does something else and sort of opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. And like, Matt's probably done that, you know, a dozen times. Is that really possible? Or am I just completely an idiot? Matt's holding on one-handed down this rickety-ass plywood runway. You could crash and kill yourself just on the run-up to the ramp. He's like that big and there's like that much air under him. The ramp's that big. And whether I pulled it or skipped to the ground, that moment was everything. <laughs> Three years after Matt tore down his last big ramp, X Games added Mega Ramp and made it the centerpiece of the event. You watch the X Games today, and you guys got risking their lives on these huge ramps. And Matt was definitely the guy who started ratcheting it up to where it got to today. Well, he's the first guy to do any sort of big ramp stuff, and now we've got the whole big air event in the X Games, and that's largely because of, of Matt ever trying it or ever dreaming it. Today's a, a little nerve-wracking because a couple years ago, Matt uh, almost lost his right arm. He was in a big wreck, a semi hit him. So he hasn't ridden anything big for two years, and the doctors told him he would never ride again. And Today, he's riding a very gnarly bowl. People say, oh, I love that so much, I'd give my right arm for it. Matt could do that today. I don't know, I, I'm just a little nervous. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is like, this is like a new beginning. This is like a first challenge of like, I've never ridden a ramp like this. I've, it's like I have total new equipment. My arm is, is a, got, totally new limits and and I, I start like it's been a long kind of ride that I've been doing uh, doing with this like I um, I start I started thanks PJ man, man he's a foul mouth little prick he cussed me the whole way up here for leaving <laughs> him in the car and I say Yoda I am a Baptist and my ears aren't garbage cans so uh, I'll put I'll put him over here I really believe that my arm wasn't gonna work and that and I, I had totally new limits but they're like limits that like uh, Pain tolerance couldn't really ignore because it just didn't work anymore. The power of a semi truck hitting at like 50 miles an hour is just ridiculous. And so I, I've lost these muscles that control this arm. If you can kind of see my collarbone, like how that just moves around, it's not even attached to anything, you know? I've kind of gone through here, I've gone through this one twice, and I've gone through this one, and uh, I've been looking at my bike, you know, how am I going to figure this out again? How am I going to play? So I started looking at my body like more as a and bicycle doctors, part, like yeah, and, Spike said. Right, and doctors like carpenters. After you get hurt enough, you just start seeing your, it's a, you're just, you're, you're a piece of a, your body's a part of your bike. It's all one piece of equipment you're trying to keep going. <laughs> you know, I, keep I don't going. think <laughs> most people look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and really what people I think don't understand is I'm happy either way, you know, like I'm, I'm happy waking up on the flat bottom, as happy as I am airing out, but because it's just like, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm just going for it. You had a bunch of surgeries on it before the rack, right? Yeah, I've had 25 something surgeries, but uh, um, I'm... He's held together by pins, rods, and duct tape. <laughs> yeah, I owe my life to medical science, really. <laughs> He's a very nerve-wracking friend to have. That's pure, encapsulated passion right there. In England, we call it reckless abandon. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my God. Sorry, he just did something scary. He, yeah, that's all he does. Jesus. He can't even shake someone's hand without holding his right forearm so you don't pull his right shoulder out of the socket, and he's out here doing that. Like Matt's got one arm, 
no breaks. Define all odds by riding again, you know? What am I doing? Just lugging beer up the hill. He loves it. He loves riding. He just, the doctor told him, you cannot do that. You won't ride again. I'm uh, Matt's personal assistant today. I'm his driver. Actually, I'm not driving. <laughs> I'm moral support. This is a story, though, that I never thought I was going to tell. And so whenever I got this opportunity to do this with like Spike and Jeff and PJ and those people that kind of grew up with this spirit and this fire, like being able to tell the story through them, it's like really all of our story. What it's all about is just going for it, you know? Like the way I like to play, and same with you, you know? And so like, not many people like to live that way. They just like to, they like, okay, wait, no, are you sure this, tell me, make, let me, let me see some uh, track record. And it's like, where are you going in life? You're just following what's already been done. It's like, when it comes down to it, to go for it, that untalented is <laughs> to be that untalented. I to take be, you untalented to a whole new yeah, level. To take, Thank to, you, Matt. To, to be, Jeez, to I thought take, he was going to give me some props yeah, no, on to, this. To be that untalented, but then still go for it, you know? It's like <laughs> that, like, dude, that's that spirit that everybody should have. Like, I wish I had that because it's Thank like, you? You know, because, like, yeah, totally. But he knows he can't do this because after watching him go for this multiple times, I now know he can't do this. It's not acting, but he's still going to go for it because he just. Because he can't help it, you know? He just goes for it. You know? He likes to go for it. That's a great saying in Bolt. I think it's like, in order to make the impossible become possible, you must be awesome. <laughs> Why did I think of that? I just been being a douche. I could be awesome and things would totally change. My favorite thing is just being as high as I can be and just getting the best view. And uh, seeing all this spectacular landscape, I want to be up in there and looking down on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he said one more. I'm not going to try nothing hard or anything. I'm like, okay. Well, Knowing he was going to. So low. That was <laughs> awesome. I'm sorry I made your friend do this craziness. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, no, and, and in the, the skateboard pool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't, you can't high five that arm. The other one you can high five. Well done, Matthew. You never see.